It's always been there, standing between you and your health. A wall, between a pain that won't disappear and a doctor who magically appears. Between a long wait on a hospital bench and staying right where you are, at home. Between finding yourself out of medicines and finding them at your doorstep, whatever the time. Between years of health records all over the place and all your records in one organized access from anywhere place. Between your current regimen and the recommended routine. The wall. We don't need it anymore. Say hello to Apollo 24-7. This is India's largest end-to-end -end omni-channel healthcare ecosystem. Designed to touch more lives than ever before and delivering its promise in three important ways. One, listen. Talk to us anytime from anywhere. We've got 7,000 doctors and 30,000 healthcare professionals listening. Two, advise. We'll give you expert advice, advice you can rely on, because it comes from India's number one healthcare provider. Three, assist. We bring you India's largest health network of pharmacies, clinics, hospitals, and health insurance experts. 20 million people already trust us for their care, and a further 50,000 people are discovering this every day. Apollo 24-7. Expertise is for everyone. Hi everyone and welcome to the Health R powered by Apollo 24 by 7 and your life. Well, let's wait for a few more people to join us on this journey. In the meanwhile, I want you guys to tell me how you're doing. Yes, I'm doing fine. I'm very happy and I'm truly happy to be interacting with you guys today. And one more thing which I want to share with you is please feel free to ask any questions that come to your mind and I will do my best to respond. All right, so let's begin. Um, but before I start, I want each one of you to close your eyes for a moment and check how you're feeling. No, I don't want to hear the answer that I'm okay. Okay is not a feeling. Now, why am I asking this? Why is this so important? It's important because most of us are not in touch with our feelings or our emotions. And this is because of our conditioning. Now, what do I mean by this? Uh, remember when you were a child, you fell down. What did everybody around you say? They said, come on, it's nothing. It's just a bruise. It's just a little bit of blood. You'll be okay. Come on, come on, let's get up and play or something like that, right? Well, but it's not okay. I have got hurt and I am feeling the pain. Why am I not allowed to feel it? This is because, again, like I said, that we are taught to completely sweep our emotions under the carpet. And you know what happens because of that? is that suppressed emotions cause us a lot of harm. And guess what? It can even manifest as diseases later on. In fact, now the research says that many of the diseases, many of the illnesses are psychosomatic, which means they are related to your mind, to your emotions, which is why I'm asking you to keep in touch with your emotions. The way I did it was I set an alarm on my cell phone every now and then say two hours to begin with and I would ask myself okay what is the emotion word that I'm going through right now that helps you keep in touch with your feelings and emotions so how about starting this activity from just now moving on let's look at life what is life right so we know that yeah when life goes by by which I mean when we, we are not in lockdown or pandemic it still has disappointments, loss, or stress. Is it possible really to have a life with zero stress? We all want that, right? That we say that, oh, I don't want any stress in my, in my life, but some stress is important for us to work optimally. Yes, it is true. Some stress, which is called 
positive stress or U stress, that is EU stress, is important for us to work properly. For example, just before the exam, a student gets stressed, right? Which is what pushes him or her to study. Or when one is getting married, we all know how stressful that situation can be, but then it's fine, we enjoy that stress too. Or when you get promoted and have to shift to a new place, that brings about some stress. Now, yes, this kind of stress does cause a lot of restlessness, anxiety, but we know that when it's removed or when the when the function or the event is done, you go back to being your normal self. Now, which pretty much means that zero stress life is not possible. We don't want that because it pushes us to feel a certain way to function at our maximum. Now, the goal is not to get rid of these things, right? Which is anyway not possible, even if you and I want it, but to handle it in such a way that we emerge victorious. We don't get bogged down by the pressure. We don't suffer from um, anxiety and chronic stress where it breaks us, makes us cynical, and we are not able to savor the beauty that is around us. And it does not allow us to live our life the way it is meant to, liberated with lightness in being and with a lot of joy. I know, I'm aware I know that pandemic has affected our mental health and perhaps even our ability to concentrate. The way we work has changed. People have to work from home. The lines between home life and work life has blurred. Many of us had to broaden the scope of our roles, adapt to a rapidly changing environment and even connect with teams remotely. So today we will focus on how one can thrive at work and achieve a sustainable work-life balance that does not cause burnout. One thing I'm sure you will agree with me is that change is the only constant in life. Incidents happen, circumstances change, people change, which automatically leads to us changing. So why not take the steering wheel in our own hands and lead a powerful and liberated life instead of life leading us wherever it wants. One of the biggest reasons why we are unhappy in our lives in the lockdown or otherwise is because we are trying to control everything. Now think about it. Is it really possible? We say that, oh, life just isn't going the way I want it. But remember that yes, through all this, to be the captain of your life and not a passenger. Have you ever noticed how happy people seem more relaxed, energetic, and vibrant? No, it's not your imagination. Being happy makes you feel good. It's good for your body and your mental well-being. Moreover, today we all talk about immunity and what we should eat for immune system to function optimally, etc. Right? But happy people actually have stronger immune system. They cope with stress better. So obviously, then there are less medications that are required they have a lot lower level of pain and they also miss fewer days of work so sometimes taking a step back and recognizing things for what they are is the greatest gift you can give yourself while yes there are things in life over which we have no control there are others which you can influence and one very important thing is that even if you don't have a control over a certain thing you can definitely choose how you behave or what your response will be, right? So while you may not have power over what others do, say, think, and feel, you can control your responses and perceptions. Now, let's take a minute and ask yourself, what do I really want? When I ask my clients this question, they will give me a list of what they don't want. And that's what I point out, that it's not about what you don't want. Think about what is it that you really want. And I bet that you will find what you want is pretty much to live a joyful, peaceful, purposeful, and fulfilling life in terms of relationships, money, and health. Now let's take a look at various aspects of holistic living. And why do I say this is because all these contribute into you feeling happy, in you leading a life that is also beautiful. So first, 
one which I will share with you is physical wellness. We all know what physical wellness is, right? It's about eating a nutritious diet, exercising, doing yoga, proper rest and sleep. Now, one thing which I will point out is most of us do not sleep well. We do not sleep adequate number of hours as well as the quality of the sleep. So be careful and look at your sleep pattern. Make sure that you sleep for seven to eight hours and the quality of sleep is good. So avoid looking at your screen because blue light that emanates from the screens is very, very bad for you. The next one is mental wellness. Now brain is a an extremely vital organ of our body. And we really don't pay attention to this, right? We all go to the gym, we work out, we build our muscle. But what about building your brain muscle? At the end of the day, you have to use it. Otherwise, you lose it, right? So make sure that you're using your brain adequately. And how do you do this? There are various ways. One, of course, is meditation. Very, very good for your, for your brain, for your mind, right? So meditating every day, which I will be sharing a little later, we will do the activity as we move along, makes a big difference to your brain health. Not only that, you must use it by learning new things. Now, most of, most of the people say, oh, I'm at this age, why should I go and study again or learn something new? But that keeps your brain active. So education really does not stop when you get your degree from your college. You have to keep learning something new. And the simplest way of kind of shaking your brain into learning new things or not being in the comfort zone is as simple as use your left hand if you're right-handed to brush your teeth tonight. Just see how strange you, you will feel or have a glass of water instead of having your right hand with your left. So basically use your non-dominant hand to do different activities. That itself will start creating new neural connections in your brain. That is very, very, it's a very simple technique, obviously, but you can start with that. Now, playing Sudoku or solving puzzles, for example, learning a new language, um, learning a new instrument. This is very good to keep your brain sharp. So go ahead and start incorporating a new activity that you will take up from today. Don't wait for tomorrow after the session or as I'm speaking, think about something that you've been wanting to do, wanting to learn. It could be even as a simple thing such as crochet or knitting. Yeah. So you can do anything like that. That will help your brain to remain sharp. Now, now the next one, which I want to share is spiritual wellness. What is spiritual wellness? Spiritual wellness is no, I'm not talking about religion because religion is supremely personal. I will not get into it because it each to his own is what my belief is where religion is concerned. Spiritual wellness is the right behavior. It's the right attitude. It's love. It's compassion. It's kindness. And this is not only towards others, but towards yourself too. Most of us constantly have negative thinking. We are constantly talking about negativity, right? I mean, to yourself, if you think about it, if you close your eyes and just assess the thoughts that come to your mind, most of us, 90% of the times are speaking negative to yourself, right? So why should you do that to yourself? So that is something that spiritual well-being brings into the picture and you start changing. The next one is emotional wellness. Now, like I said, that we are taught to sweep our emotions under the carpet, which then kind of uh, the suppressed emotions will manifest into physical illness or mental illness. So that is something that you must look at. Keep, at, keep an eye out for negative emotions. And no, negative emotions are not bad. If I get hurt, I will feel the pain, right? If I lose somebody who's near and dear to me, like when I lost my father, I grieved, I cried. However, it was for a certain amount of time. Of course, everybody has a different way of dealing with emotions and grief. You find out what works for you. And if that extends, then please don't hesitate to seek help. That's very, very crucial for your mental well-being. The next one is social wellness. We are social animals, right? We can't stay all by yourself on an island and be happy. We like people. We like to interact with different people. It's very, very important for you to start looking at your social well-being by developing beautiful relationships. Nurture them. 
uh, make friends and make sure that you are there for the person you spend adequate time if it's not physically possible now maybe on a platform such as this right you can always interact so having good strong relationships will help you in staying happy of course helping others is a very good thing too now this, these are the good things that you can look at now what are the nine things that you have to watch out for if you want to start living a blissful life being the master of the universe right except accepting that you no longer have control over everything in life so allow whatever's happening you can seek guidance from others but be careful that do not want you should not want to have control over everything and everybody because a lot of people have that oh my god that you know how can this one say like this that this person should not be saying like this but that's not in your control right the second one is unwillingness to tolerate uncomfortable feelings it says it all i don't need to explain leaving things undone so that also is one of the complaints which i get a lot which is oh i can't finish what i have started so make sure that you stay on track complete what is it in your hand remember monotasking is very important multitasking is not good for you it decreases your productivity though a lot of people very proudly say that oh i am a multitasker but think about it it's basically your brain shifting from one to the other very quickly so that's not good for your brain it also reduces your productivity and your creativity so be very very careful with that expecting to find happiness outside of yourself remember happiness comes from within yes you feel good when some somebody compliments you but if somebody insults you if you feel bad then you have to think about it that sure you enjoy the compliment but if somebody insults you look at it in a way where it does not affect you so much that it you start crying or you, you keep stewing in that and saying that oh my god what is this my life is uh, no good you know, don't go to the extreme pessimistic attitude mind the words that come out of your mouth now before they come out of your mouth i also want you to keep a tab on what's happening in your mind what are you saying to this is referring to what i said earlier right that the conversation that we have for ourselves or towards others keep an eye on that see if you're thinking too negatively if that is so you can bring about the change by becoming aware and by replacing the thoughts to say that okay this is not good for me let me start thinking of a positive thought yeah resisting change i already said this right that change is only constant in life there is nothing that we can do to stop change every single day every single moment millions of cells in my body are dying and new are taking its place so change is constant even at a cellular level assuming others are better than you so these constant comparisons this is something also that can completely ruin your mental well being mind your own business and focus on bettering yourself so that is very crucial invest in yourself what are you doing for yourself and that is not being selfish or self centered when you have a glass full only then can you offer whatever it is in the glass to the others if your glass is empty what are you going to give somebody else so make sure that you are full of love kindness and compassion so that you can help others get out of whatever they are your loved and near and dear ones your loved ones right ignoring problems like i said that sweeping your problems under the carpet whether it is your physical health emotional health or mental health is going to manifest in not that great a uh, way of being okay all right the next one is holding on to your past so we all have good bad ugly experiences in the past right now using these past experience as a deterrent is not going to help you instead you have to you have to ask yourself that okay what did i learn how can i not make the same mistake right so you will say um you will say that you know all this is fine i understand all this. this this is not rocket science but how should i handle it what should i do so the solution is something that i am bringing on into this session which is practicing mindfulness breathing techniques and relaxation techniques now what is mindfulness right many people get confused between mindfulness and meditation yes meditation is a way that you can achieve mindfulness 
consciousness. So different people have different understandings. And I want you to type in the chat as to what you understand when I say mindfulness, because like I said, that different people have different uh, thought process or they, they think that this is this is it and you know it's it's used synonymously with meditation some people say that or think that it's a philosophical way of being in the world and some actually shrug and say hey you know what this is not for me this is for yogis or saints and you know all those people but here's what i say that mindfulness is a way of life that means that it is a way of working with attention where it is focused focused on the present moment in a non-judgmental way. It's not about what we experience, but how we experience things, irrespective of whether they are pleasant or unpleasant. What are the benefits of mindfulness? Well, mindfulness has positive outcome on our overall well-being. It reduces anxiety, stress. It increases concentration levels and memory. It also helps us sleep better. It allows us to be in touch with our body and manage our thoughts and emotions efficiently, right? So now let's look at the activities that you can practice to mindfulness and for relaxation. So I've divided these into two core categories of mindfulness practice. One is the formal practice, which is meditation. So the main mindfulness meditation, there are so many types of meditations, right? It could be your, with your breath. It could be a walking meditation. It could be loving kindness meditation. There is body meditation. There is candle flame meditation and so many. There are lots and lots of meditations. So what I recommend is whatever you like, whatever you um, enjoy doing, you must try and do that. You can try different types and then identify one that works for you. And then the next one is informal practice. Now, why do I call this informal and why am I introducing this is because not all of us have time or because we have families, we have duty, we have responsibility. We can't just take off and go into the mountain, into a cave and sit and meditate all the time till we achieve nirvana or enlightenment or whatever it is, right? That's not possible because we have you. So informal practice pretty much can be done anywhere and at any time. So we apply mindfulness to everyday life, be it walking, bathing, cooking, eating, etc. Now, why do I mention this is because like I said that my experience has taught me that most of the people that I interact with land up eating in front of the screen. So it could be your laptop, it could be your cell, it could be your television, watching some serial or tell uh, some, some new series. What we are eating, then you're not being mindful to what you're putting in your mouth. That has its negatives. So start enjoying mindfulness even when you're eating. It will help your physical health. It will also help you mentally, right? So let me start by introducing one very simple technique. Now I have, I have always believed that if it is very complicated, you can't sustain, right? So this is one of the easiest way to practice mindfulness. Now you can take up anything, like I said earlier as well, anything that you choose to, this is, this is the initial part of Vipassana meditation of which I have been a practitioner for over 12 years. So this is the first step towards the practice of Vipassana and it is called Anapana technique or Anapana meditation. Anyone can do this anywhere. And as you practice this, you can do it with your eyes open. Now, why do I say this is because initially to begin with, please choose a quiet room. And generally I recommend same place every day till you get the hang of it. And then you can just do it anywhere that you choose, right? So, um, like I said, that I have created a quiet corner for myself and it helps me get into the zone immediately because our brain forms association. So when I sit in my meditative corner, immediately I start feeling calm. So choose one quiet corner in your house where you can sit and you can meditate. Now, let me go ahead and share how to go about practicing 
anapana so i will tell you how to sit and uh, all that but the area that i want you to concentrate is draw an imaginary triangle above your upper lip to your nostrils the rims of your nostrils and inside the nostrils so the, the where the air goes and comes out right so that area so it's pretty much an imaginary triangle over here right so let's do it if if you guys are willing you can start practicing from now so that gradually you can start building your muscle memory so sit in a lotus position on the floor it's best practice when you can sit on the floor with your palms placed like this or you can make this mudra and place them gently on your knees with your elbows bent so don't keep it straight don't keep your elbow straight bend it very very gently now some of us cannot sit down on the floor i understand that and that's fine you can sit on a chair but then don't sit resting on the chair sit in front shift a little ahead if you're sitting on the chair right now take a few moments for whoever can sit on the floor please go ahead and sit in the lotus pose okay and gradually close your eyes make sure that your head is in the neutral position the chin is parallel to the floor people who are sitting on the back of this sit upright just pull your spine up or as if the head is getting pulled upwards with a rope okay for people who are sitting on the chair again you can place your palms on your knees and close your eyes now focus on your breathing the natural breath start observing as the breath is coming in and out do not force it to be a deep breath or shallow breath you are supposed to merely observe your breath let's do it for few seconds observe the air as it's entering in your nostrils and as it it's going out one nostril may have may be blocked there's no need to move your body at all stay stationary thoughts will come and go do not get stuck with any thought if your mind wanders gently bring it back without being judgmental without berating yourself that you're not paying attention it's okay mind will wander but gently bring it back to focus on your breath make sure that your tongue is not stuck to your upper palate let to gently rest in your lower jaw feel the sensation of the air the friction on the part above your upper lip see if you can observe the temperature of the air it will differ the air that's going in and the air that's coming out now just gently rub your hands with each other to create warmth place your palms gently on your eyes open your eyes in the palm and then bring your hands down take a moment to savor this feeling look around and smile 
So by practicing Anapana meditation, it improves your concentration. It helps you in your memory. So, and like I said, that this is a very simple technique. You can practice it anywhere, anytime. Initially, make sure you do it in your quiet little corner, but later on, you can even do this with your eyes open. So if you have a very important presentation or you have a very important meeting, practice Anupana so that it grounds you, it calms you down, yeah? So by practicing these kind of techniques, you will feel empowered to take the control of the situation, especially when you get overwhelmed, right? Because at times that happens. So it helps you take off, the, take the edge of a, a bad day, or you could even start with this practice in the morning because that helps you in your day being mindful and positive. Okay, so now let's move on to the next kind of breathing technique. It's called box breathing. Again, do it in a quiet place. Basically, these, these are very simple and subtle exercises that you can practice. But again, practice is the key. Consistency is the key. So even if you do it for 10 minutes every day, you will see how your life will start changing. So let's do box breathing. Again, sit with your feet flat on the ground, hands on your knees and chin parallel to the ground. Just follow my instructions as I take you through box breathing. Now, I will say a few numbers, right? As we move along, if you so wished, you can increase the number. What is box breathing is breathing, we'll start with four counts, breathing for four counts, hold the breath in your body for four counts, exhale for four counts. And then after exhalation also, we will hold without the air in your lungs for four counts. Slowly, as you keep practicing this, you can even go to 10, 10, 10, 10, and so on. Yeah, it's up to you as much as you can practice. All right, so let's start again. Close your eyes. Breathe in, two, three, four, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Do it on your own for next few cycles. You can go five, 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 and so on and so forth. But don't be in a rush. Every breath, you don't have to go to the next count. Now gently rub your hands once again to create warmth. Place your palms on your eyes. Feel the warmth. Open your eyes and bring your hands down. Welcome back. All right. So the next one is my special and it's my favorite pranayam. It's called Anulo Bilom. So for people who've done it already, I'm sure you've experienced the beauty of this pranayam. This is an extremely calming form of pranayam. It completely grounds you. It makes you super, super quiet and peaceful. I practice this especially when I'm stuck in traffic, right? So it really helps me deal with a lot of anxiety that honking or traffic causes, or even before my exams. So this is Anulo Vilo. What you're supposed to do is take your dominant hand, place your first two fingers, so index finger and ring finger at the base of your thumb. 
Yeah. So this is what you will do. Place these two fingers over here. The ring finger and your thumb. This part, not the nails, but the soft part. Place them on your nostrils. Now remember that throughout when we are practicing this, and I will guide you through this, do not remove the fingers. So throughout, make sure that this part of your fingers, it remains on your nose. So you're not doing this. A lot of times I see people doing it like, like this. Now what happens when you do that is that you tend to push. If you see this, automatically your nose is moving. So the nose should not move, which is why when you have this kind of pose, then you land up being gentler on your nose. Remember, it's your own nose. So please be careful with it. Yeah. So keep play, just keep your fingers on the nose throughout and you will block the right side or the left side, depending on how, or just follow my instructions. Yeah. So place your, these two fingers on your nose, make sure that your elbow is not like this. It is relaxed, but it's not stuck to your torso. Just be very, very uh, natural or casual. And in case your hand starts hurting, you can bring your hand down, resume normal natural breathing. And when you're ready after two or three breaths, again, you place your hand on your nostrils and continue with Anulo below. Let's start. So place your fingers on your nose, close your right side, inhale through your left nostril, close the left nostril, exhale through right side. Now inhale through right side, close your right nostril, and exhale through your left nostril. Inhale through your left nostril, close your left nostril, and exhale through your right side. Inhale, close your right nostril, exhale from the left side. Do a few cycles on your own. And you can bring your hand down. Again, rub your hands. Each other, place them on your eyes. And gently open your eyes and bring your hands down. So these are the three types of breathing techniques. Like I said, there are so many of them. But for this session, I've chosen these three because A, they're my favorites and they can be done anywhere, anytime, just before any important thing or even when you're feeling anxious. So doing Anulo Vilom will also help you with your anxiety. Now, the next one is used by a lot of psychologists because this technique helps you to ground yourself. This is especially used to manage anxiety. So what happens in this is that it is called a uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 technique. Okay, now what is this technique? Let's do this. This is, you can, you'll have to keep your eyes open in this. It's not a breathing technique. It's not a mindfulness tech. It is a kind of mindfulness technique, but it is something that, again, will help you ground yourself. Yeah. So now let's find five things that you can see. Just make a mental note of five things. Just identify five things in your surroundings. Go ahead and do that. Okay, once it's done, let's go to four things that you can touch and feel the texture. It's not, not uh, just touching it, but actually experience the texture of four things. Go ahead and do that. All right. Now, three things that you can hear. Can you hear your fan? Can you hear the AC? Can you hear my voice? Can you hear something else? Right, go ahead and listen to three things. All right, now two things that you can smell. 
So just sniff to see if you can identify any fragrance or any smell in the air and you can smell your hand or any object which is near you. So two things that you can smell. All right. And the last one is one thing that you can taste. What is the taste in your mouth? Just identify that. All right. So what happens is when you do this 54321 technique, by the time you do this listing, you will be present because it brings you into the present moment and you also start feeling calm. So whatever anxiety what is causing you anxiety takes a kind of a back seat yeah so these are the techniques that i've chosen for this session now i want to see what all of you are saying uh thank you thank you for that thanks ayan i'm glad you enjoyed the session okay now let's go to the questions uh, yeah. okay the first question is by ayush she's asking me how do I deal with everyday distractions while working from home? Yes, that is absolutely a good question. Thank you for asking. And I encourage all of you also to please write down anything that has come to your mind throughout the session or even otherwise, that's fine. Um, so what happens is what is the biggest distraction, right? What I recommend is to audit. So keep a check in your, or you can write it down in your journal or your diary write down all the distractions that you feel are keeping you away from whatever, whatever work you're doing, right? Most of the times what I have seen is our cell phones. Those are the biggest distractions, the calls, uh, social media, all these are the biggest distractions, right? So you need to identify what is it that is bothering you or keeping you away from being productive and creative. If the, the one secret which I want to share over here is, to minimize the time that I spend on social media or on phone, um, I shift my phone to grayscale. By shifting the phone to grayscale, there is a setting in iOS as well as, as well as Android, which makes the phone black and white. And trust me, that completely helps you in reducing. You don't feel like looking at it. It helps you reducing this big distraction. If there is any other distraction that you face, you have to be very assertive. So suppose your family members or your friends kind of are, um, they kind of not let you work then you've got to be assertive to say, hey, this time to this time is my working time. I do not wish to be um, disturbed during this time. So I would really appreciate if I'm given this time so that I can go. Yeah. So go ahead and make a list. Make a list for three days. Take your time. Identify. Write it down so you will start knowing how to deal with it. Sapna is asking, I gave birth last year. Now I'm having a hard time getting back to uh, work like before okay uh, so last year that means your baby is one year old I understand because I have I, I am a mother so I understand how difficult it is to start focusing and concentrating on on work once you have a small baby but I applaud your effort that you want to get back to work and yes work forms a big part of our identity for people who choose to work of course homemakers uh, people who do not choose to work it's a very, very personal decision. You enjoy whatever you're doing as long as you're doing that. That's great. So Sapna, what you can do is that go back to visualizing how you felt when you were working. What gave you joy? Why did you like working? Make a list of that. Write it down. So I'm a big fan of making lists, right? Like you've heard me saying so many times because that helps me put in perspective what is it that I want? Like I said earlier, we all know what you don't want. But if you want to work, make a note of all the good points, all the things that, that gave you that joy. And that will help you in going back to working. All right. So let me see the next question. Um, ever since I started working from home, I'm being bombarded with extra assignments. How do I say no without sounding rude? Yes, this is one question which I get asked often how to be assertive, how to be able to say no, right? Um, 
what you can do is if you're finding it difficult to say no to work people because that is something that happens with a lot of us is start by saying no to simple things in life so it could be um your family member it could be your friend so you can start all your uh, security guard or your vegetable vendor you can start by saying no to smaller things and then gradually learn to say no to assignments which you think you might get um, you know which which are pushing you to a level where you can't handle it or if you don't want to take that path then what you can do is you can straight away explain the predicament you are in so if your boss is telling you or if your colleague is asking you to do something you can say that okay i have this 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 this, this that i'm busy with right now would it be okay if i complete this can you wait till i complete this before i take on a new assignment because otherwise i will not be efficient i will not be able to complete what i have on my plate which is not good for anybody so you can you can give that answer and maybe that can help right a communication uh, always helps over communicating rather than under communicating is the key to success so it's okay even if you feel that you know oh, why should i say this but that will help the other person understand what you are going through right um okay nisha is asking i recently started a small home business during lockdown but i'm worried it won't work out because i don't have formal office space is there a way to set up boundaries between my business and personal life yes so like i said earlier that um, today's day and age what has happened is since you were working from home the the work life and home life the lines are completely blurred so how well, what i do is that during office hours i dress up i wear my formal clothes as a counselor as a doctor i wear my formal clothes i have this space which i have created which is my office so this is i don't do any other activity here like even my reading which i love reading i don't read over here i only work so this becomes that space where i come in and i know my mind automatically then starts associating it with work the second part which i did is i have explained to my children who i live with that this is my time that i need to work i don't want any distraction i don't want any disturbances so you have to be very assertive you have to be very particular that okay this is the time when i'm going to work yeah so that will help you create the boundary now um the other part which you had mentioned that i'm worried it won't work out because i don't have formal office space now i don't know what home business you've started however now since things have started opening up you might find a good deal because today there are a lot of properties that are vacant uh, which have been covid casualties so to say so i'm sure you'll be able to find a good formal office space if your business needs but if you can work from home if you can create the boundaries then my good wishes are to you and i hope you become a big big successful uh, business owner the next question is how can i take breaks without feeling guilty um now let me explain why breaks are important what happens is that when you're continuously working right especially on a screen or whatever then your brain does not allow you to be as productive because it gets tired now when you take breaks so even if it is just standing in wherever you are sitting and just taking like a 2 minute walk that itself that change of scenario will help your brain again come back to being at its creative best uh now there is a pomodoro technique which i will share with you and this is helpful for everybody i use it um it's it's very good for students as well which is that um you make a time for of 25 minutes so 25 minutes you don't look at your phone you don't look anywhere else 25 minutes you take or you do the task whatever is at hand after that after 25 minutes you will take a break of 5 minutes so that's called one pomodoro so a pomodoro of 25 minutes a break of 5 minutes so in this break you go you walk around you look outside you have a cup of coffee tea have a glass of water go and talk to anybody if you so wish but that 5 minutes of break will rejuvenate your brain it will empower you to work better so start applying this pomodoro technique it is super super uh, very very effective yeah all right um okay, let's move on to what 
are um, okay okay can you please give some tips on how to be more productive without overworking yourself now this is obviously connected to the earlier one um you assess your time how many hours you want to work and make sure that you stop working at a certain time you just stop working move away from this work space that you've created for yourself change into a lounge where nice you know go and chill with your family play board games and don't feel guilty about it because your family life is equally important you are equally important wherein your relaxation time helps you to be more productive yeah so that's a short answer um okay meena is asking i've been feeling extremely anxious after making the switch to working from home any easy exercises okay uh, meena so what what happens is again because working from home is something that we are not used to we like going out we like to meet our colleagues and that has given rise to a lot of anxiety so what you can do is you can start your day with anapana meditation just after lunch you can do anulom vilom and then you can also practice journaling which is a challenge that i'm going to leave you guys with yeah this will help you reduce your anxiety also associating your home and work like i said that make a demarcation that is very very important make a routine very very crucial that will definitely uh, help you okay now guys i know there are a lot of questions unfortunately we do not have time for uh, i i i have time only for one So I'm really sorry about that, but let's see. Ajay is asking now that things are opening up. My boss wants us to get back to the office. I'm fully vaccinated, but I still don't feel safe leaving the house. What can I do? Yes, and your fear is valid because again there are variants of this uh, virus which are there. Um, so what you can do is you can take care of yourself by double masking. So wear a double mask. Mm, make sure that it's N95. and make sure that you're cleaning your hands regularly you're using sanitizer and you can do that in addition you can ask your boss if you can go every alternate day instead of going every single day so that will also help you transition in a much smoother manner yeah so and okay so there are many more questions if you can just uh, send us a questions we will try and answer Uh, but i do hope that you found today's session helpful do include these simple exercises in your daily routine and stay safe because the pandemic is not over yet now there is one challenge that i'm going to leave you with which will help you tide over any anxiety or any issues that you're facing which is journaling now what is journaling journaling is something that we are used to uh we we use it in our psychology or counseling sessions so you take a journal you can take a book and every single day you will write three pages okay it can be anything it need not be grammatically correct nobody needs to read it so the handwriting can be as terrible as you want doesn't matter even you don't have to read it again it's just about whatever's coming to your mind you write it for 6 weeks so three pages Six weeks, you will start seeing the difference in your life. So that is one thing. And the other thing, which is my favorite uh, activity, it's called ha- my happy list. Now, what is my happy list? Is basically in your phone, make a list of ten songs. Okay, these these are your happy songs. The first song remains constant. You do not change it. So think about about this song very carefully. Yeah, because this song does not change. the rest of the nine songs you can change because as music evolves you start liking some other song as to this song right so you can do that why create this list is because whenever you listen to it you call it the happy list your brain starts making association with happiness so the first song is a happy happy song the minute you feel low or you want you to feel like really peppy and chirpy you listen to your happy list so that's another suggestion that i have um so i request you all to get yourself and your family members vaccinated as soon as possible because that's the least we can do for our country right if you're not sure how to go about it simply walk into any apollo vaccination center and get your dose in fact there is a special freedom offer from 12th to the 21st august where you can get your covaxin shots for just 
1,250 rupees. You can also book your vaccine slots on the Apollo 24 by 7 app. In case you have any health related queries, talk to a trusted doctor on Apollo 24 by 7. Our viewers can also avail an exclusive offer on Circle, Apollo 24 by 7's premium healthcare program. Sign up for the membership today and use code CIRCLE50 to get 50% of the subscription price as cashback. So go ahead, download the app and get Apollo's expertise with hashtag bus So that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me on the Health Hour powered by Apollo 24 by 7 and your life. This is Dr. Aditi Govitrikar signing off. Take care.